Hello everyone, this is Tracy Koch. I'm talking about chapter five today. It's epigenetic influences on gene expression. <coughs> Excuse me. The learning outcomes for this chapter include to describe how the epigenome is related to the genome, explain how epigenetic changes affect gene expression, provide three clinical examples um, demonstrating the impact of epigenetics, um, explain the processes of uh, methylation, explain the processes of histone modification, and describe the role of microRNA. To explain also how epigenetics plays a role in the development of cancer, describe the microbiome, and discuss the impact of specific environmental toxins on gene expression. The example that can help explain epigenetics is the Dutch hunger winter. During the winter of 1944 to 1945, World War II in the winter was bitter cold and particularly brutal. The area of the Western Netherlands was under Nazi control and there was a blockade that prevented shipments of food from getting into the region. People survived on about 30% of normal caloric intake. This period of significant famine provided information to scientists. What they found was that babies that were malnourished in the last few months of gestation remained small and never caught up, in spite of having adequate nutrition once they were born. However, those that were deprived in the first three months of gestation only were born at normal birth weights. They were healthy at birth, but developed higher rates of obesity and more health problems in general than the previously described group. Even more interesting is that future generations of those malnourished in the first three months also had higher rates of obesity and cardiovascular disease. Epigenetics and epigenomics are alterations in gene expression that can be inherited and does not result in changes of DNA sequence. So why is it that those future generations would be affected? Epigenetics, the alterations of gene expression which can be inherited without seeing changes in the DNA sequence. The epigenome is from the Greek meaning above or on. It's a chemical modification passed from generation to generation the modification can be caused by environment, such as parental diet or environmental toxins. Epigenomes are flexible and react to outside forces. This is a link to an overview of the epigenome, and I would recommend that you take a look at it. Epigenome includes biochemical factors that alter gene expression. They include methylation, histone modification, and microRNAs. These are the components of the epigenome or the mechanism of epigenetics. <clears throat> methylation is the addition of a chemical tag called a methyl group. It turns off gene expression it silences gene from one parent. DNA sequence plus the methyl tags are passed on to the next generation. Methylation may have a profound impact on several regulatory elements altering transcription beyond just silencing promoters. This may turn gene expression off or on depending on the process tightly wound and it may turn off, turn it off and loosen may allow the gene to be expressed or turned on. Histone modification are proteins that give the DNA structure. The chemical tags attach to the tails of the histones. They alter how tightly the DNA is actually packaged. When the DNA is tightly wound, some sequences may not be available for transcription. This is a graphic of histone modification. Chemical tags attached to the tails of the histones 
and can alter how tightly the DNA is packaged. At the bottom, the DNA is loosened and accessible and therefore turned on. Micro RNA are small, single-stranded pieces of RNA. They bind to messenger RNA and it prevents translation and it therefore prevents protein production. Epigenomic changes may be caused by a wide variety of environmental factors under prenatal influence. Epigenomic changes may also provide clues about differences in phenotypes despite having the same genotype. Microbiome. <clears throat> Um, all microorganisms and their genomes are present in and on a person. It's what we refer to as normal flora, and it's unique to every person. It be you begin acquiring this at birth, and the changes can affect health adversely. I would encourage you to read the section in the textbook on microbiome. It provides details on the relationship between the organism and existing flora, and how investigators are looking into this phenomenon. Epigenetics and cancer. We know that cancer represents changes in gene expression. And we also know that damage or loss of expression of suppressor genes can permit expression of oncogenes. Epigenetics have been shown to change the expression of the suppressor genes. Damage or mutation of an oncogene can make it less susceptible to control by the suppressor products. What is interesting is that a tumor cell can live and divide in a cell culture indefinitely, whereas normal cells typically in a cell culture will die. So these mechanisms provide a means for researchers to study cancer and test cancer drugs. Methylation is, most studied, is the most studied epigenetic mechanism in cancer. The areas around the oncogenes are often hypomethylated, which increases the expression. Areas around tumor suppressor genes are often hypermethylated, which silence expression. Cancer prevention and therapy research. There are compounds to prevent methylation of the suppressor genes and compounds to cause oncogenes to be methylated. Drugs that inhibit enzymes that increase methylation or change the histone influence, and these may be um, antioxidants that um, influence this process. Using epigenetic strategies combined with other methods for cancer prevention and treatment are likely to pro provide a realistic component to fighting all cancers, or most cancers. Nature and nurture. Environment influences gene expression. This is nothing new. We've known this for a long time. Environmental toxins such as BPA and phthalates um, can influence uh, cell structure and therefore influence uh, future generations. Methylation can be influenced or altered by the environment such as your diet. So we know that that is going to be a key component in future research on epigenetics. The agouti mice are mice with two copies of dominant agouti genes. Um, those mice are yellow and obese. When the agouti gene is methylated or turned off, the mice would have a brown coat color and a normal appetite and not be obese. So here's an example of those mice. Epigenetics and nutrition. As we previously discussed about the Dutch hunger winter, showed the impact of malnutrition on pregnant females. Um, in the Swedish country of Norbotten, they had extreme famines for several years. And during that time, teenagers 
um, during that famine passed on health problems to their same-sex grandchildren. So there was a developmental window there for epigenetics. Um, so this um, hypothesized that a diet high in um, the methyl donor nutrients of B vitamins, folic acid, and SAMe can alter gene expression. So how can the knowledge of epigenetics improve people's health? Well, it's ongoing research, but we know that drugs that can affect methylation and histone modification um, can provide epitherapeutic drugs. So here are a couple of additional resources to help, um, help you in understanding epigenetics and epigenomics. Uh, these are the websites that um, I found to be most helpful. So that concludes the lecture on Chapter 5. There will be a case study for you um, on Blackboard to help reinforce the information we talked about today. Thank you for your attention.